I was trying to remember which button I was supposed to press. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this first day for you? We come up or All right. So <laughs> Democrats, the real terrorist threats. We're going to talk about that. And we've got all of our normal stuff, fire, finished firearm, uh, bullet points, SOTG homeroom, all that. But I'm going to make a request to you, the student of the gun listening audience, especially the grad program, because you guys are the most dedicated. But if you're just listening casually, that's awesome, too. Something happened yesterday, and this is illustrative of the world in which we live. Last week, we talked about the, well, we talked about 1984. Remember, we spent some time talking about how the the retelling, we're going to get a, a liberal woman to retell the story. We had a long discussion about why that is a crazy psycho irony. Um you know, a story about what happens when you allow the state to change history or to erase things it doesn't approve of, of which it doesn't approve, how dangerous that is. Now, previously on this show, I have said, look, people are like, oh, well, the D.C. and, and, the, and the Senate and, and the House and, the, you know, they're not censoring anybody. And I said, no, they don't have to. The, the Senate and the, in the House and the, you know, the, the ruling party in D.C. doesn't have to go out and censor anything because they have people to do it for them. So you got Pelosi and Schumer and all the, you know, the rogues gallery of scumbags. They're like, hey, we, did, we don't approve of censorship, but we think censorship is bad. Yeah, but people are doing it for you. I uh, was having a discussion with a friend of ours and he said that he had an epiphany and uh, I thought it was very, a very well, um, I guess maybe not thought out, but it was a very interesting epiphany. And it was the fact that the people are not the useful idiots. You know how we always talk about useful idiots. Yeah. Well, who are the useful idiots? He, he had an epiphany that it's not the people, it's the politicians. The politicians are the useful idiots. And he used the example of this bill that's however many thousands of pages gets dropped on their desk and they have to pass it. Literally, it's said out loud that they have to pass it to know what's in it. Okay, yeah, well, 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 it's why? too big. We can't yeah. read it. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, you really are the useful idiot then. Well, in, in, in a sense, yes, I agree with that uh, because the, the people in Washington, the puppets, they're just they're just greedy little rats that do what they're told by the people who are above them that you and I will never see. And I'm not talking about a shadow government. I'm talking about the banks. I'm talking about the 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 Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the people with the money that have politicians do things for them. But you you got me a little bit off track here, Jared. Getting back to 1984 and censorship, we had the freaking redheaded Chucky doll in the White House admit that they're on the phone daily with Facebook. Now, obviously, they're not on the phone with Facebook as an entity. They're on it with people who work for Facebook discussing troublesome content. Why is the government coordinating with a Suppose and we, you know, we always hear this like Facebook's a private company and they can do and say anything they want. And, and Facebook's a private company. You don't get to hide under that that shield or umbrella when the government is telling you what's bad and what content and what words and so forth shouldn't be available to the public to see. You say, okay, Paul, I believe you. Thank you for the recap. And I, we talked about Stalin and how when Stalin decided he didn't like anybody anymore, he had pictures altered and had them pulled out. Their names were torn out of the records. They were erased. They were redacted. Bob Saget just died. You guys should know that. The guy from Full House, the guy from America's Funniest Videos, Home Videos, had a heart attack. He performed in a club the night before. He was on tour doing stand-up. Not in a hospital, not on a ventilator. In, he was 65, but that's not that old, right? 
So, bam, out of nowhere, he dies. Heart attack. And people are like, oh, you know, that happens. People, anybody can just go to sleep and die of a heart attack. Yep. Well, one of you guys out there in our, in our grad program audience found an Instagram video uh, in the, around the end of December, middle to end of December. He did one of these Zoom uh, interviews. Because when you're, when you're a public figure, especially if you're a comedian, if you're a stand-up guy, you have to do promos all the time to get people to come to your shows. Right. So you get on with the KRXY, you know, 1015 in Cincinnati, and, and you'll do a, a, a morning, you know, a Doug and Johnny in the morning show to get people to come to your show. It's very common. So he's doing something. He's doing this live interview, and they're like, hey, Bob, how's it going? And he's like, oh, man, you know, the things are a little difficult here. He's like, like well, what happened? He goes, well, last week I went to the pharmacy and I got my booster shot. He said, you're supposed to get it in your arm, but I, I got mine in my butt. So things are a little tender right now or a little sore. I'm feeling a little sore. Right? I watched that clip yesterday. Because one of you guys in the grad program shared it in the Liberty Mastermind. It's an Instagram clip. So I took my little thumb and I tapped on the screen. It was on my phone. And I went to share it with our Instagram stories. Went to bed. Wake up this morning, there's a red circle around our Instagram stories with a red circle with an exclamation point. So I tap it and it says, failed. Your video upload failed. Okay. So I'm like, it says retry. So I hit it, retry. It goes to Instagram gray screen. All right. So I go to the actual Instagram channel itself. Video, this, the video you were searching for is no longer available. Piss off. What? Why? Or you know how much garbage and offensive baloney is on the internet right now? Do you know how much garbage is on YouTube? Your mom brought something up to me about this Pennywise popping up in the middle of a children's video saying kill your parents and stuff like that. What? Yeah, you can ask your mom about it. Uh, she just, we talked about it over breakfast, but uh, we're this is more evidence. Like, why would you? All right, first of all, if the shot, if if the 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 gene therapy is completely safe, it's the only prescription drug in the history of the world to have no side effects. You guys realize that, right? Every prescription drug on planet Earth has a laundry list of side effects, and they're required by law to tell you about those when they advertise their drug, except the miracle shot, which isn't really a miracle because you can still get sick, you can still be in the hospital, you can still transmit it, you can still receive it. You know, it's one of those vaccines that, that allows you to still get the disease. You know, like the smallpox vaccine, well, if you get the smallpox vaccine, you can still get smallpox, die of smallpox, pass smallpox on other people. I mean, yeah, you know that, right? And this is when you say, no, are you an idiot? It's a... So here's the question you need to ask yourself. Who's scrubbing these things? Overnight, that video went down the wormhole, went down the memory hole to use 1984. If... What they're saying is is completely true. They're, that vaccines are the these these mystery shots, not a vaccine, for God's sake. For these the 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 gene therapy from Pfizer, Moderna, whatever, totally safe, been tested, proven to be safe. Just ask the Facebook fact checkers. Then why would you want to hide that? Why wouldn't you actually promote it? Why wouldn't you push that out to the world? And say, see, Bob Saget's a smart, intelligent, reasonable person. All you anti-vaxxers. Why would you hide it? I, and my question to you, so, is A, you guys are smart out there. You know how the internet is. Somebody saved that. 
I wasn't smart enough at that last night right before I went to bed to figure out a way to actually save that physically, not just let it be in the Instagram cloud. Because we've done this before, Jared, you and I, we're like, when we find a story that may, that the state might not like, we have to save it, like physically hard save it. Otherwise, the, the cloud's just going to scrub it and it's going to go bye-bye. It's like that for just random videos, too. You right. see something when you're going through the feed or whatever, and you're like, oh, I want to go watch that video again. And you didn't bookmark it or, or yeah, anything. You and you're it. like, where is this? But it's not that I just lost that. Instagram said, oh, that's gone. Piss off. That never happened. That never happened. That guy standing next to Stalin by the river was never there. This, this, and you say, well, who cares, Paul? It's just one little clip and it's just one guy and it's just a coincidence. How many coincidences have to happen before people will wake up and start? And how many, and I'm wondering how soon before Hollywood cracks? I know that there's scum, right? But how many more of their people are going to coincidentally die after taking the mystery shot? Before they say, hmm, maybe I should engage my rational brain. Well, I don't know. They're, they're pretty much all whores anyway. So, But if you're out there and you have access to that video, share it with us. Go to the Student of the Gun, uh, the Liberty Mastermind group, or the, uh, the public group, or whatever. Because I was going to come to the radio today and just play the 15, 20 second clip of him saying, yeah, I, got, I went to the pharmacy, got my booster shot, and I was supposed to get it in my shoulder, but I got it in my butt, and now it's a little sore. <laughs> and it's a joke. Ha ha, funny, funny. And then two weeks later, normally regular healthy dude on tour doing comedy, bam, heart attack, dead. A year ago, doctors are saying, don't take these shots we were calling it the clot shot and we don't even we don't even have time to get into the dr malone thing so i just wanted to bring that up at the very beginning uh if you've got access to that video where saget says he went and got a booster shot two weeks before he died of a heart attack it's just a coincidence yeah, you know what we need? What's going to happen now, Jared? Somebody's going to write an article about, well, you know, Bob Saget's great-grandfather died of a heart attack, so it was genetic, and he was going to die anyway. It has nothing to do with COVID. Jared, do you know how I know that they, uh, that article hey. that we read last week? You want to interrupt me? Go ahead. I do. Uh, quick question. Was it him sitting in front of, like, a wooden book cabinet with his glasses on? He's got earbuds in? Probably. Okay, I think I found it. Mm. Well, if you listen it, to it. It's 12 seconds, so is it this? I went to the pharmacy <laughs> the other day. I got a, a, a booster shot, and uh, I, I should have gotten it in my arm, but I got it in my butt, so I'm a little, I'm a little pain. But that That's was episode, it. Uh, Bob Saget's here for you, episode 125, Bob calls some people. There you go. When Thank was you, that? Zach. You're smart. It was, it was uploaded 22 hours ago. Oh. But, uh, so someone reposted it. That probably wasn't. Someone reposted it. So how many more coincidences? Oh, this, this is how I know, Jared. And you guys are out in the audience. You're really smart. Last week, we, we did the article. We talked to you guys about the article um, during the grad program about the, uh, how all these soccer players, these footballers, are having heart problems and collapsing and dying. Some die, some don't die. And they got some hack doctor to write an article about, oh, it's just a coincidence. I mean, athletes have heart attacks and die on the field all the time, like every day. It's just yeah. coincidence. Now, Jared, do you, we read that whole article. We went top to bottom, all the weird Hampshire Shire and, and, and crap like that. What did What was not mentioned one time in the article? COVID at all. COVID. And you say, well, big deal. We don't have to mention COVID in every article. Really? <laughs> Do you remember when the uh, the port exploded in Lebanon, in Beirut? It was like a nuclear explosion last year. Yep. The worst falling out was going to be because COVID, because the hospitals. They said, 
in a in a in a city that's already reeling from COVID, this is going to make it. That's going to make it worse. We had an explosion that killed hundreds, if not thousands, and they had to, in the first two paragraphs, put COVID in there. We spent all last year talking about every news article that's written has to be written, and and the COVID's got to be inserted in there somewhere. You're like, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Like, yep, but we got to put it in there because everyone needs to be reminded constantly to be afraid. So we do an article about all these footballers that are just coincidentally having heart attacks and heart issues and collapsing on the field after and not once in the article that they say, well, yeah, they, they're all fully vaccinated. They didn't even bring it up. Yep. That's how you know it's propaganda. How far are we? Into it was this a lie by omission. We haven't even got into the first topic yet. What, all right. Not only have we not gotten to the first topic, we haven't played the intro video. Well, please well, here do. Here we go. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, all you guys out there in the audience. Oh, Duracoat Firearm Finishes brought to you by Duracoat. We do this thing every single week. We're going to do it today. It's called the Finished Firearm of the Week. And today is no different. We got some feedback on the new format. I don't know if you saw that, Dad, but everybody that I've seen any feedback from says they love it. This particular person, Golly in Discord, says that he didn't get to listen live, but it feels like a single longer episode is better. Keep up the great work. And Greg also said, Greg Tabor, he said, it makes it easier for those trying to catch it live, which that's true. If it's a longer live episode, then there you go. There you go. All righty. We got the Durcoat Firearm finished firearm of the week all right so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pop out the 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 bullet holdy thing sit it down bracket stick my digit in there look at it all right now ready to go this the gun that i'm holding up to the camera right now is the tp9 sfl sfl yeah, it's the sf long biatches and you say it looks like you didn't finish coding it yeah i did uh, what I did is I did, this was one of my first hell and back, the hell and back uh, distressing finishes. Uh, this is from Duraco, and I ordered the, this, you say that kind of looks like a gray white. It's because it is. This is the Urban Mirage White, and it's not a pure white, not the snow white or an eggshell white. It's kind of a, kind of a gray white. And I really actually I really like this this color uh, for snow and uh, winter. What I did was I, I, I followed their instructions. If you go to their website, if you go to uh, Duracoat Finish Firearms or Firearms Finishes, uh, they have this thing called the Hell and Back Distressing Kit. And they will show you how to make your firearm look. Now, it's obviously what there's a, a solid black coating underneath. Let that I let that harden and cure, and after that hardened and cured, I put the Mirage Flage white on top of it, and then I did the the deliberate distressing to it. I like the so, distressing; that looks really cool. So it looks like it's hardcore. Like yeah, woo! Look at that. Be scared. Um, so this is oh, and then I swapped the sights out. I put tritium sights on this. Speaking of tritium sights. Uh, if you guys have not been paying attention lately, I'm going to go ahead and set this gat down now. If you guys have not been paying attention lately, Night Vision, uh, the Accurate, the student of the gun Accurate sights for the Glock 17, and you're like, well, the Glock 17 won't fit my 22 or my, yes. They're basic, well, there's three now. 
there used to be two sight cuts for Glocks. There was the large and the standard. Um, but now there's the standard, there's the large, and then there's the subcompact. So like a 42, 43 kind of a thing, 43 X-ray. Uh, but we, we did discover that, well, what they told us is the new and upgraded and improved Accurate sights for Glock pistols are easier to install, uh, and you can install them on 17s, 19s, 22s, 23s. Keep going. There's too many to, to name. Uh, and also the 48. So there you go. Uh, we've got sights for the 48. We've got sights for the, the CZ P10 Charlie, for the Smith & Wesson Shield. Um, and, and the Shield 9, 40, and 45 all have the same sl- uh, sight cuts. So you don't have to worry about which caliber is, is a different. No. In fact, you can get everything that you need to know about the accurate sites at studentofthegun.com slash sites. And I'm putting a link in the discord for you guys. Right. Meow. Right. Meow. Right. Meow. All right. We've got something I think is going to be pretty interesting to talk about during the Brownells bullet points. So let's go there right now. All right, bing, bang, boom. I had a little, uh, I had kind of a experiment that I was conducting this week. At the, uh, at the, the PX9 Gen 3, which by the way, is the, gun of the month giveaway from if you go to sotggiveaway.com uh, that's the gun that we're giving away this month from SDS Imports is the uh, the PX9 Gen 3 it is a 9 millimeter. yours will be black and it is a $499 value so last week I showed you guys the, the PX9 that I did in the, in the mission specific white from Duraco and that I had put accurate sights on it and then i put a red dot on it and i did i put a red dot a hollow sun with a red aiming dot now i did that actually i did that a few weeks ago i don't know it was before christmas i did it and i took it out when there was no snow on the ground and it was still just kind of green and brown or whatever but brown um shot it on steel and so forth no problem everything was great went out this last weekend and it's it's been snowing pretty much nonstop since Christmas. It'll stop snowing, but the snow doesn't go away. Um, so the, the the ground's been white since Christmas or before Christmas. I went out and sun was out, super bright. The you know ground is covered with snow. Do I need to tell you how bright it is when the ground's covered with snow? It's super bright. Super bright. So I punched that gun out, and I'm like, I don't see this red, and I, I squint, and I'm like, there it is. You say, oh, you need to turn it up higher. Well, no, it was it was high. The thing, the deal is we, we learned this with lasers years and years ago, red lasers. If it's bright, sunny day and you punch the gun out and it has a red laser, you're not going to see that laser because that big yellow ball in the sky overwhelms the color red. It overwhelms it. So, which is fine because with the, with the PX9, I can see through the red dot and use my sights. So I just used the front sight, had a good time. I went home and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna experiment. I got, uh, recently, I picked up one of the new models, one of the new Hollow Sun models from Primary Arms Optics, and it's green. And it, it's, it's the same footprint, it's a Trigicon RMR footprint, uh, but this has a green, and it's like that real super bright green, like the safety green, you know? Uh, it has a bright green chevron. I don't know if I love the chevron or not, but I don't really care. Uh, and it, but it's also got the solar panel on it. It's got that, you know, solar recharger. It has a battery, but it also has a solar panel on top. So the thing's never going to die. I mean, can we admit that? Like with between the battery and the solar panel, the thing's never going to die. Um, so I put that onto, I, I took the red dot off of the PX9, put the green one on it, screwed it back in, put some thread locker on it. And then the next day I went back out, 
Same situation. Bright, sunny day, clear blue sky, no clouds, snow all over the ground, super bright. Punched it out. Wow, there's the green. Boom. Brilliant right in my eyeballs. That's so it interesting. Did, it did make a difference. And, well, see, we've known this. The reason that the safety green color is being used on front sights and road guard vests and stuff now instead of orange or red is because the way the human eye works is the first color that you lose is the red spectrum. The last color that you lose is that super yellow green. That's the last color spectrum that you lose. So the, it's, it seems to be brighter. Is it a perfect solution? Not necessarily. Now, the one other thing that I want to talk about is colorblindness in men. In the United States, somewhere like 9.8 or 10.5 or whatever, adult men have some form of color blindness. It's just a thing. I mean, it's a reality that we have to deal with. Uh, people ask me, when we did the student of the gun targets, the official student of the gun targets, like five, six, seven years ago, they're like, no, nah, you're wrong. You should make them with colored dots, and you need to make the, the circle red and the triangle yellow and the thing green and the thing blue. And, blah, 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 blah. and I said, stop. Probably one out of 10, at least one or, or two out of 20 students who come to my classes are going to have color blindness issues. So if I stick that guy up there and, and he sees different shades of gray and I say red. Like. All right. What what do you want me to do here, bro? Because all those dots are gray. They're different shades of gray, but they're all gray. So we decided, well, since. Have you ever thought about that? See, that's the thing is people are like, oh, no, the, the colored dots are the way to go. That's the best target in, in the world. Unless you can't discern the difference between purple, blue, gray, and red. Oh, I never thought of that. So I was talking to a guy who's got color blindness issues, and, and we were talking about red dots, and he goes, he goes that's a nothing for me. He said, because... I look at that and I see nothing. I don't see a red dot. I see nothing. I was like, okay. I said, what about a green dot? And he's like, mm, okay, let me look. So you got a green dot. And he's like, it doesn't look. Of course, if you got someone with color blindness, that's like, that's like asking a, a deaf person to describe the sound of a trumpet. And they're like, yeah. Somebody's been deaf from birth. You're like, what does a trumpet sound like? And they're like, uh -huh. If somebody has been colorblind from birth, you say, what does red look like? And they're like, um, a, a different shade of gray. Yes, yeah, something. So but what was interesting is I had this guy, and, and I, was, I was like chatting back and forth with him. I said, I said, okay, red dots are no good for you. He's like, yeah, it's, it's pointless. I can't use it. It's not there. I said, what about a green dot? He goes, well, I don't know what green, it's like green, green. He said, but I can see it. He said, the aiming indicate is there. He said, I can see it. My eyes can perceive that color. That's a big difference. So all of you guys out there, you're like, ah, red, green, green, red. It's all just marketing. It's all just, you know, smoke and mirrors. It's, it's like new and improved tide. Who cares? Sometimes the color makes a difference. Sometimes the color makes a difference. So if you're one of those people out there, and you may be one of those people out there, you may be one of those adult men who has color blindness issues. You can only see certain shades of stuff, and and you're like, yeah, I, I don't even screw with red dots because I can't see the shade red anyway, so it's pointless. Have you tried green? And the person I was talking to said, I never thought to try green because I just figured, well, these things won't work for me, so... They won't work, so just I'll just stop using it or trying. Same thing with front sights. <clears throat> why do we? Why does? Why do the accurate sights have a white front dot and a super bright yellow green front dot, and then an orange and a red and a blue? That's here's the deal. If you're if you're trying to put a blue front sight on your on your gun, you're just doing it to be different. 
It's it's stupid. But blue <laughs> is poor, a calm and, and warming color. It's a, but it's and me. if I ever have to draw my gun, I want to feel calm and warm in the moment. It soothes me. You better hope you never have to shoot him any wearing a denim jacket. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Mm. So, um, and, and yeah, with the, with the well, that's what green, the green dots for. As long as somebody's not wearing a a uh, a road guard vest, you should be good. <laughs> if you get attacked by a guy, a highway worker trying to kill you, and he's wearing a yo, uh, but think about it. That's your Brownells uh, bullet points for today. Uh, think about color. And even if you you say, I don't have color blindness issues, I have great vision. Yeah, but you have human vision. And what do we know about human vision and colors? The science of sight. I've written like 100 articles. Okay, maybe not 100, but several. Um, the reality is, as you lose available light, and as light conditions change, your ability to perceive certain colors changes. That's just the way the world is, man. All right, if you like Brownells, like we think you should, go over there and subscribe to their newsletter or just text BRN to 556-223. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, we talked about the SDS Imports giveaway. They're giving it away. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Yeah, every month it's a new giveaway. So if you want to be eligible for the new gun, uh, you need to go in and update your, you need to update your, uh, what you call it, your entry. So if you entered in September, you were eligible for the September giveaway, but you are not eligible for the January giveaway. You guys got it? Yes, indeed. How are right, you know what I noticed? Well, I, I noticed a lot of things. Uh, the 10 millimeter has been making a comeback. You guys may have noticed that. And you say, come back? Where did it go? All right, kids. All of you Gen Zs and millennials, when I was 22 years old, the 10 millimeter was the hotness. Okay? It was the hotness in pistol cartridges when I was 20, 21, 22. Everybody was trying to make them. Um, everybody was you know, excited about them. Everybody had a 10. 45 was old news. Nine millimeter was a pipsqueak cartridge. You were, you might as well wear a dress and carry tampons in your purse if you're going to use a nine. A man carries a ten. Well, then that then people realize that the ten millimeter is not an amateur's cartridge and it's not a beginner's cartridge. It's a cartridge for dedicated shooters. The guns are big. The recoil is heavy. So what happened? The average person is like. Well, what happened was the FBI Miami shootout and what was born from the FBI Miami shootout seven, four years later was the 40 Smith and Wesson. The 40 Smith and Wesson was essentially a, a shortened 10 millimeter. It was a 10 millimeter light. That's all it was because 0 0.40 and 10 millimeter are the same. I know I just, I broke your cheat, didn't I? You're like, what? Well, I was talking to a buddy of mine about, about two, a year or two ago, and I was like, dude, what the hell is going on with 10 millimeter coming back? He said, you know why? I said, why? He said, because all these ammo manufacturers are sitting on literally metric tons of 40 caliber bullets. And they can't sell 40 caliber, 40 Smith & Wesson ammo anymore. It's as popular now as freaking crotch rot. It's as popular as, as freaking jock itch. So if you are Winchester, Federal, Remington, Spear, whatever, and you have a Connex box full of 40 caliber slash 10 millimeter projectiles, what do you do? Melt them, make statues? No. You load 10 millimeter ammo. And you get people jazzed about 10 millimeters again. And that's exactly what happened. Now, you might be out there thinking, yeah, but I've priced some 10 millimeter guns and I'm not ready to drop $1,400 on a handgun, you know, just so I can shoot 10 mil. Would you like a carbine that shoots 10 mil that's only about 400 bucks? Like, come on, man. That's not a thing. It actually is a thing. 
And if you're looking, if, if you're looking for the gateway drug, to, if you're looking for the gateway drug to the 10 millimeter, a way to dip your toe in the water and, and, uh, and experience the wonders that is the 10 mil, High Point's got a 10 mil carbine. They work. They're not that, they're, they're not that uh, um, hard kicking. And you can get them for around, I think, four hundred bucks. So four hundred dollars. Four hundred. I I would have never thought, but the world just keeps on spinning around, and people are excited about ten mil. Um, the and if you guys are really super dedicated, the the bowcaster in the Hoth Report series was built from a ten millimeter uh, high point carbine. So. You're like what? What am I missing here? I don't know. What are you missing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if, if you're if you're looking for the ten and you want, that's the his, that's the brief history of the ten mil. Um, high points got them. Carbines they run. If you think they're ugly, don't buy one. Um, but they're good and they work. All right, it's time for me to be quiet and Zach to take over the reins. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. All right, freaks and freakettes, it is time for us to move into this little thing that we do every week. It's called the Student of the Gun Homeroom. It's brought to you by our good buddies at Crossbreed Holsters. And this is a great time for me to stop what I'm doing. Because I'm about collaborate and listen. Yeah, oh. hammer, it's hammer time. Because when you say stop, you're like, you have three answers. Collaborate and listen. Hammer time, what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and style that you're used to. Mm, yeah. <laughs> there's, all, there's lots of ways to stop. Uh, we asked you last week, I think we did, about now is the season, it's a brand new year, to reach out to Durco, Brownells, High Point, SDS Imports, Crossbreed, and thank them for making this show happen because we couldn't do it without them. And they, you know, a lot of them have been with us for a long, long time. Crossbreed's one of our, our, our number one sponsors. Well, actually, the truth is all of them have been with us for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and it may be a while, or been a while since they heard from you or anyone. And like, is anybody still listening to Student of the Gun Show? Is it still even, are you still doing that? You, you could be like one of my old friends who sends me a message. What are you doing? What, are you still doing that student of the gun thing? No, I stopped that years ago. <laughs> like, well, how do you, that happens? Like every once in a while, somebody like, I haven't talked to in a long time. They're like, you still doing that student of the gun thing? Yeah, you gave that crap up. Uh, but let them know. Let them know. There's different ways. All right. We've got a, uh, a homeroom brought to you by oh, Crossbreed, Crossbreed Holsters. Holsters. Americans are not buying it anymore. Amaland.com. This was published on January 7th, 2022. Man, I can't believe it's 2022 already. It's crazy. 2020 Americans, also. Yep. Americans not buying gun controls. Crime prevention ruse. It's by Larry Keene. Gun control groups worked for decades to impose Second Amendment restrictions that do little to reduce crime. They've used public relations campaigns, scare tactics, and rhetoric that never addresses those actually committing these tragedies. Tragedies. Over the past two years, though, Americans have experienced firsthand what happens when they are left defenseless against criminals that don't follow the law. A new poll shows law-abiding Americans have had enough of the gun control group schemes and the ruses up. 
New data from the uh, Trafalgar group is noteworthy, showing more than 80% of Americans now believe strict gun control in some of the country's biggest cities has had no effect on reducing violent crime. And they even make cities even more dangerous for law-abiding wow. citizens. You mean like what's right there in your face? Yeah. <laughs> you we <laughs> it, It's the, the, that's the psycho world that we live in. These mayors of these cities that are just rife with crime. They're like, it's not our fault. We have gun control. It's it's Indiana and Virginia. And it's all these people who are, are want freedom and, and stuff there. It's their fault. And, and eventually people will be like, all right, just stop. It's like listening to a five year old tell you how it's not their fault that they knocked over the plant and it's busted on the floor well jimmy and lives down the street mm, yeah he's like all right just stop just stop this is actually very refreshing and it's amazing that americans but you know what's scary though jared hmm. it says more than 80 percent. so somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 percent of people are like yeah i think gun control makes places safer yeah based on what based on the lies that CNN tells me. Yeah, well, you could only I mean, I don't know what the details are of like IQ and whatnot, but yeah, how, how do you probably a it? large percentage of people that are lower IQ that can't comprehend or uh, higher IQ not. that have this thing called cognitive dissonance? Yeah, that's what I believe. And I'm not going to allow facts to change what I believe. That's a man. That's a long discussion that we can have because <laughs> we can because spend three like, hours with Rogan on that one. Uh, yeah, that's like one of those things where any adult human, especially males, if you have any kind of thing that challenges what you currently believe, it is a serious struggle to allow that, even if it is facts, to allow that into your life and make it change the way that you view things. Especially the older, at least the older I get, the more I'm kind of not really stuck in my ways, the, but the more I think that I, the more experience I have when an experience is a long teacher. And so when I get things presented to me, even facts, sometimes I'm like, geez, there's no way that's true. And you challenge it a little bit more and you challenge it a little bit more and it takes longer to adopt the truth because you, the, I think the older you get, the more skeptical you get because there's more uh, life experience in there. You think? You see these little wrinkles right here? <laughs> these came at a cost. <laughs> um, with a price. These came with a price. Yeah. Well, well, it's, you know, that's why we have to do what we do. This story here is illustrative of why we have to turn on these black carbon steel microphones and do what we do. Because if we don't see the other side is never going to stop lying. They they run the playbook and they've been they run the communist socialist playbook and they've been running it for a hundred years. There will always be liars and cheaters in the world, and it's up to good moral citizens like ourselves to spread more good than the liars and cheaters are spreading lies and cheats. You you have to hit people with the facts and say, okay. You, you believe this because somebody on CNN told you. All right, great. That's when I say, here you go. Less than 1%. Is, you know. Um, of, of America. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is good. It says, uh, it's what, what does it say? Sentiments of 40% of. Oh, wait, oh, hold yeah. on. I don't yeah. know if I talked about that on the radio, so I need to elaborate on what I just said. There was data that came out that showed that based on Nielsen ratings and other types of ratings that less than 1% of the United States population tuned into mainstream media last year. Mm. That's less than 1% of the United States population, not the whole and, world. And you know what? The, but the thing is because they're there, they, they, they're continuing to run this narrative that what they say matters. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the sad thing is, it's not just, and I know we're talking about gun control here, but it, it all ties together because it's about liberty. 
is it's not just CNN and MSNBC and, and so forth. Every television show that's modern that comes out of Hollywood, that's why I cannot watch a sitcom. If a sitcom was produced in the last 10 years, especially the last five, I can't watch it. Like, why can't you? Because it is so chocked full of left-wing propaganda, you can't get around it. And, and whether it's global warming or whether it's how stupid Trump is or whether it's Christians are all hypocrites and, and dunderheads or, you know, you know what's normal? Transgenderism. That's the norm. Anybody who's not transgender is the weirdo. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever the whatever the psycho left wing propaganda is, they have to drop it into their their shows, their movies, and so forth. Uh, and and generally, we punish them by keeping our money in our own pockets when they do that. Ergo, the Eternals, uh, Captain Marvel. J Zach, jump in. Is Captain Marvel the lowest rated grossing? Marvel movie of the sin of the what not trilogy of the package. Nope. What's the lowest? Eternals. Eternals is the lowest. And right next it, to that is Thor two. Really, Thor two? Nobody liked Thor two. Thor two eh, did well, very, very, very poorly. Um, but there's so much in it that that like le well, worse than Iron Man two. Yeah, people didn't mind Iron Man two. P people were like, eh, Iron Man two was fine. People did not like uh, Thor two. Yeah. Um, but Captain Marvel, when that when that Hollywood leftist chick went out and she's like, derp, derp, derp. my movie's not for white men. My movie's not for white cisgender men. Stay home and save your money. What? Who do you think the Marvel audience is? So anyway, my point is this. This is good news. It's good news. It means that we need to keep doing what we're doing and not stop. Because we're fighting against a billion dollar industry that is hell bent on twisting and shaping and molding America into their mutated form of wokeness or political correctness or whatever. So good news, good news here. Um, we're making a we're making inroads. So I thought we would share that with you. You know, it's all about being dangerous on demand. We hope that you guys are. All right, it is time for Zach to, for me to shut up and Zach to talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out shopsotg.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do that. Do that. All right. It's time to move on to the main topic of the day. And that main topic of the day is Democrats are the real terrorists. So the uh, vice prostitute went out on January 6th. And see, this is part of the media propaganda campaign. This is, and if you don't think they're organized and you don't think that they all do what they're told to do, I don't really know what to tell you. We've demonstrated, how many times, Jared, have we come on this radio and demonstrated that it doesn't matter whether it's Channel 6 in, in Provo or Channel 7 or 14 in Bangor, Maine, they all are reading from the same script that they're given. Because your local Channel 4, Channel 2, Channel 7 news is owned by one of only a few major companies. There's only a handful of broadcasting companies in America. So on January 6th, I was treated to, via app television, the, the January 6th insurrection one year later. What we know, the horrors, the horror. It was like freaking Marlon Brando in, in Apocalypse Now. The horror. And so the vice prostitute went out. Well, I'll let you read it, Jared. It's a story from the New York Post.com. NYPost.com. And this was published on January 6, 2022. Says Harris slammed for comparing Capitol Riot to 9 11 and Pearl Harbor attacks. 
Vice President Kamala Harris caused outrage Thursday by comparing the January 6th Capitol riot to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941 and the September 11th attacks on New York and Washington by al-Qaeda terrorists. Certain dates, this is a quote from her, certain dates echo throughout history, including dates that instantly remind all who have lived through them where they were and what they were doing when our democracy came under assault. Lie. We're not Date, a democracy. Dates that occupy not only a place on our calendars, but a place in our collective memory. December 7th, 1941, September 11th, 2001, and January 6th, 2021. Critics immediately slammed the vice president, accusing her of uh, hyperbolic uh, lack of historical perspective. It's really hard for me not to say the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yeah, emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yeah. Your collective memory is drowning in exaggeration. Tim Graham and the media research, he of the Media Research Center tweeted in response to Harris. The independent fact checkers are taking the day off on this hyperbole. VP so, <laughs> you know, where were you when Kennedy was shot? You know, where were you when you the, the moon landing? Where were you on 1-6-2021? Oh, I remember exactly where I was, man. 1-6-2021. Oh, I'll never forget that day. How about um, the beginning, you know, days that echo through history, like July 4th, 1776, April 19th, 1775, uh, Fort Sumner. When did, when did Fort Sumner, uh, when was that? Well, that, that's, that's nowhere near the, the Fort Sumner attack. Nowhere near or Sumter, sorry, Sumter. Uh, there's two that you know it's it messes me up because there's actually two there's a sumner and a sumter yeah um yeah fort sumter you know when when the civil war the american civil war began that's child's play compared to one six and you know what's crazy jared every time i saw one slash six you know where i went you where did my mind go First Battalion, oh, six yeah, Marines, six Marines. I was with I was with First Battalion, six Marines, second Marine Division. I was with one six. So everyone's like one six, one six. I'm like, what? What? What do we do now? <laughs> yeah. Um, eh, April 12th, 1861. What was that? The beginning of the American Civil War. Eh, that's nothing compared to people breaking windows and knocking over chairs. So collective memory hole here this is when student of the gun gets to be the educator of the masses so uh the vice prostitute says that breaking windows trespassing and knocking over furniture is the same it's on par with the 2800 people who were killed in pearl harbor about the same uh 2,997 people killed in, in New York and Washington on 9-11-2001. Yeah, it's about the same. I mean, that's like trespassing and breaking glass. They broke windows! And they knocked over furniture. Wow. Speaking of insurrections, uh, have you seen what's going on in Kazakhstan? Jared, you probably haven't, have you? No. The I've Kazakhstan people, uh, 164 people died as the people of Kazakhstan rebelled against their government oh, geez. last week. Yeah, no, I didn't even see that. No big deal. It's nothing, shh, nothing to see here. And it was over government crackdowns and uh, increase in fuel prices and so on and so forth. The Kazakhs know how to party, okay? They know how to... They, they probably look at us, they're like, oh, did, did you knock some furniture over? Ooh, that was an insurrection. So I wonder how the vice prostitute thinks about the Kazakh thing. Anyway, let's go back in actual American history, the real history, the history that you're not, we don't talk about, and we're going to wonder, we're going to examine. I, I, see, I learned this growing up, but we don't teach it anymore. Why? 
You say, well, this is the first time in the history of, of our democracy. It's not a democracy, you whore, you Democrat prostitute. The United States of America is not a democracy. Never has been, never will be. You're scum. What happened in 1983, Jared? Did anything happen in Washington? Nah. Nope. 1-6 was the worst. The worst in history. This is from smithsonianmag.com. In the 1980s, a far-left female-led domestic terrorism group bombed the U.S. Capitol. Historian what? William Rosano uh, investigates the May 19th communist organization in a new book about the little-known militant group. Oh, that's funny. This was published on January 6, 2020. I guess they figured that one year be a before, bunch of hits. They didn't know. Yeah. No, 2020. So it was the day that that happened. No. Amidst. Wait, what? It wasn't. No. It was two wow. years ago. That's crazy. That was two years ago, not one year ago. <sighs> yeah, the time. Amidst the social and political turmoil of the 1970s, a handful of women, among them a one time. Uh, Bernard student, a Texas sorority sister, the daughter of a former communist journalist, joined and became leaders of the May 19th communist organization. Named to honor the shared birthday of civil rights icon Malcolm X and Vietnamese leader Ho Chi Minh, M19 took its belief in revolutionary anti-imperialism to violent extremes. It is the first and only women-created and women-led terrorist group, says national security <laughs> expert and historian. I was going to make a, a mom group joke, but... I that's that. that's not really... Okay. All right. Um, what's the, the thing that the, uh, the, the Nanny Bluebird's favorite call girl? What's, what's Shannon, the sandwich maker? Uh, mom's against... Moms demand action. Moms, Moms demand, demand action. More bedroom yep. action. That's a female-led terrorist group. Uh, and the the truth is, though, the Bader Meinhof gang, also known as the Red Army faction, uh, Alrika Bader was a woman. She was in charge. Um, but whatever. I, I'm not. But it wasn't. I'm not woman supposed to know. Created. I'm not and to, woman led. I'm not supposed to know history. Yeah. M19's status as an incredible outlier from male-led terrorist organizations prompted Rosano, an international security fellow at the think tank New America, to excavate the inner workings of this secretive and short-lived militant group. The resulting book, Tonight We Bomb the Capitol, pieces together the unfamiliar story of a group of essentially middle-class, well-educated white people who made a journey essentially from anti-war and civil rights protest to terrorism. Hang on a second. I spoke wrong. It's it was Ulrika Meinhof. She was the chick. Andreas Bader was the dude. So Ulrika Meinhof was the head of the Red Army faction in Germany. Go on. After their information in or after their formation in 1978, M19's tactics escalated from picketing and poster making to robbing armored trucks and abetting prison breaks. 1979, they helped spring explosives. Builder William Morales of the Puerto Rican National Group, FALN, and Black Liberation Army. Organizer Asada Shaker. Is that Tupac's uh, family? I don't know. From their pers respective prisons. So both Shaker and Morales remain on the FBI's most wanted for terrorism and are thought to live in Cuba. Eventually, M-19 turned to building explosives themselves. Just before 11 p.m. on November 7th, 1983, they called the U.S. Capitol switchboard and warned them to evacuate the building. Ten minutes later, a bomb detonated in the building's north wing, harming no one but blasting a 15-foot gash in the wall and causing $1 million in damage. Over the course of a 20-month span in 1983... Did furniture fall over? It had to have. Because it, that's... That's terrorism is when furniture falls over. Over the course of a 20-month span in 1983 and 1984, M-19 also bombed an FBI office, the Israel Aircraft Industries Building, and the South African Consulate in New York, D.C.'s Fort McNair and Navy Yard, which they hit twice. Jeez. The attacks tended to follow a similar pattern, a warning call to the clear the area, an explosion, and a pre-recorded message to media railing against U.S. imperialism over the war machine under various organizational aliases, 
never using the name M19. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and pause right there. So my question to you kids is, how many of you knew about this? How many of you were familiar with it? I was because I actually was educated, so that's my yeah, fault. I, I knew my, about this. My one. fault for getting educated. Um, and I, I learned all about the, the communist left-wing you know, co- terrorist organizations when, when, in the 80s when I was growing up. And, uh, so there was that. You think that the vice prostitute is unfamiliar with the 1983 bombing? So, I mean, but but when a bomb explodes and rips a hole through a wall and, and does a million dollars worth of damage to the cap, that's nowhere near as as shocking to the memory, to the collective memory as trespassing and breaking windows. I mean, trespassing knock and they knocked over podiums and furniture. They broke glass. I mean, that's that's gotta be hundred million dollars for the damage right there right you say well okay okay paul stop that's that was one thing one time that dc was attacked uh by female communists Shh. we're not gonna talk about that we're not gonna remember that Shh. so that was that was the only time that that's happened or was it there's another one here, 1971. I had never heard about this one, so this was, I learned something today. Bomb explodes in Capitol building. A bomb explodes in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., causing an estimated $300,000 in damage. But that was $300,000 yeah, in was 1971 money. And the same thing with 1983, a million dollars in 1983. Yeah. Um, $300,000 in damage, but hurting no one. A group calling itself the Weather Underground claimed credit for the bombing, which was done in protest of the ongoing U.S.-supported Laos invasion. The so-called Weathermen were a radical faction of Students for Democrac- Democratic, Democratic Society, Society. SDS. Oh, SDS. The Weathermen advocated violent means to transform American society. The philosophical foundations of the Weathermen were Marxist in nature. They believed that militant struggle was the key to striking out against the state to build a revolutionary con- consciousness among the young, particularly the white working class. Their primary tools to achieve these ends were arson and bombing. Why do these people target white people? Among the other targets, whites are evil. Among the other targets of Weathermen bombings were the Long Island Courthouse, the New York Police Department's headquarters, the Pentagon, and the State Department. No one was killed in these bombings because the bombers always called an advance warning. However, three members of the Weather Underground died on March 6, 1970, when the house in which they were constructing the bombs exploded. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. You Wrong failed. Liar. You failed that class. Uh, you suppose that the vice prostitutes not familiar with this? Never heard of it. Don't know what you're talking about. Never happened. Good question. So that these these didn't make the list. These didn't make the list of insurrection and terrorist activity aimed at the U.S. government. People knocking over chairs and breaking windows and trespassing. Those are the people that are they. You you know in twenty years. You're going to wake up and be drinking your coffee on January 6th and think, oh, you know, I remember exactly where I was that day. It was like the like Pearl Harbor or the JFK assassination or 9-11. It's, it's the same. No, it's not the same. But I noticed that the vice prostitute didn't bring up the these bombing attacks because then you might actually remember that it's Democrats socialists and communists they're all in the same party those are the real dangerous people in america so that was your history lesson for today that was your history lesson for today uh, i hope oh we don't have to rap i was saying we had to rap jack's giving me the the thing i am I'm thinking oh, i gotta rap yeah we just keep moving on oh okay all right do you guys remember when a schizo attacked a softball practice with an sks rifle and shot up a bunch of people. You're like, oh, what are you talking about? That never happened. Yeah, it didn't. It was a it was a psycho anti-Trump Democrat 
that attacked the Republican softball team in D.C. Uh, that goes down the memory hole. Shh. That goes down the memory hole. We're not going to talk about that. Do you remember when the uh, five police officers were shot to death by a viral anti-Republican, anti-Trump black man in Dallas? Shh. Memory hole. You remember when a black Muslim and his son killed 10 people in D.C. with sniper attacks? John Lee Mohammed, who's striking out against the, the white imperialist in D.C., in the D.C. area. Whoa, whoa, shh, memory hole. We don't talk about that. Kamala didn't want to talk about that. She didn't want to talk about the Democrat walking onto a softball field and shooting up a bunch of Republicans because he hates Trump. Yeah, wow. Uh, I wonder if, if, if in Kamala's memory, if, if a guy walking onto a softball field with a rifle and shooting up a bunch of Republican congressmen who are practicing softball, if that's, uh, if that's one of those things, those days that just stays with you. No, we don't. Uh, 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 we don't talk about that. When the what about when uh, the the uh, gentleman, the African American gentleman who was released from jail on a thousand dollar bond, ran over and killed five people and wounded scores in a at a Christmas parade in Wisconsin, in retaliation for the. Rittenhouse acquittal. Can we talk about that, Kamala? Bring that up. Where were you that day? Uh, I, I'm, uh, are we going to... Jared, have you seen the news story about that guy and what books he owned and what flags he owned and what movies, VHS tapes and CDs he had and, and stuff? Negative. Why not? I thought when someone committed a mass murder, we needed to go to their house, inventory it, figure out what they owned, and then ban everything they owned. That's what they did when that snot-nosed little white punk went into a black church and shot up people. They went to his house. He had a rebel flag hanging in his garage. We have to ban that! Remember when uh, Amazon, after, after the media created that that fear campaign. Did you know that that little white psycho had a rebel flag in his garage? Amazon's like, pull down all rebel flags. No more. You can't sell them on our site anymore. That's a symbol of hate. Okay. So a an African-American convicted criminal gentleman gets in a car and runs over a bunch of innocent people, dozens of innocent people, murders them at a Christmas parade. Is that a hate crime? Oh, no, it's just no. Nah. The, the car, it was an SUV attack. The SUV attacked those people. Do we get to go to his house and find out what kind of flags he owned and what kind of books he had, what kind of movies he had? And, and do we contact Amazon and tell Amazon, hey, um, he had a, a uh, oh, and he was a, you know, can I, uh, I can't say it. Did, did he have a, a, uh, uh, a flag of the of the nation of Islam or the BLM or Antifa or whatever. Can, can we ban that? No, see, that all goes down the memory hole. Jared, did you see any of the, the mainstream news coverage on January 6th last week? Um, a little bit of it, not much. I saw, I saw some. I was treated to some. Did... Any of, and you guys can help me out. Did CNN, MSNBC, all that, did they bring up all of the previous terrorist attacks in D.C. that I just mentioned? The softball field attack, the bombing in 71, the bombing in 83. Did they bring those up? And they're like, yeah, and check this out. All female-led communists blew up the Capitol building. Students for Democrat Society, you know where those organizations 
Were they fomented and festered, Jared, at our universities? Hmm. Did they bring that up? Mm. They talk about the the uh, the anti-Trump, I hate Republicans guy who uh, shot up all those people on the softball field. Oh, shh. Oh, shh. No, that's, that's nowhere near as egregious as trespassing. Something else that I learned last week was that uh, that if you trespass in a government building, that the police have the right to kill you. Did you know that, Jared? Hmm. See, when I went to the police academy, I was I was I talked to my my one of my former instructors, Doug. I talked to him via chat message or text message last week, and I said, "I'm mad at you." And he said, "Lots of people are mad at me." And I said, "Yeah, but <laughs> when we went through the academy, you never told me." that I had execute authority for trespassing. You never told me that if I caught someone trespassing, I could, I could kill them on the spot. He's like, well, things change. Well, you know, things change. Things change. Because I had people literally arguing with us while they were yelling at student of the gun, how that Ashley Babbitt got what she deserved. Think about that for a second. We have adult humans in America whose brains have been so twisted by propaganda like this vice prostitute here that they will tell you that a, an unarmed woman trespassing on a government building deserved to be killed. That's dangerous. Do you realize how dangerous it is when people are so brainwashed by the media that they will tell you that she got what she deserved because she shouldn't have been there. Hmm. Now, we're not going to talk about the 275 Antifa slash BLM riots that went on in the year 2020. We're not going to talk about the Antifa BLM attacks on courthouses in Portland, police departments in they the police, correct me if I'm wrong, in Minneapolis abandoned a police station and it was overrun and, and burned to the ground. Shouldn't and oh, I was also taught, well, it's different if there's a if there's civil unrest. See, police are allowed to kill you. If you're demonstrating or protesting or rioting, like if you trespass and knock over furniture, the police can kill you. Hmm. I didn't know that. I might go get my badge back again so I can get my kill on. So that's kind of that should be bad news for BLM and Antifa. See, according to the left. And these are average people. If, if it's a riot, the police have the authority to kill you. So we can, so the next Antifa riot, we can, the police can just go out and kill them? Well, no, not them, because they're protesting for justice. Well, if you trespass on a, in a government building, the police can kill you. Really? When did the government own property? Well, it's, it's the government's property. Where do they get the money to buy that? Well, they stole it from us. I mean, it, it's you owe them that money because they're your rulers. Do you can you kids wrap your minds around the, the psychosis of believing that the people in government? That's like saying if you approach the castle without permission, the, sol the king's soldiers will kill you. Because you're not allowed to approach the castle without permission. The king's soldiers will kill you. So what we have is people in the United States that believe that, well, it's different if it's a government building because they're part of the elite ruling class. And then down here are the noisy, annoying red hat peasants. And if the red hat peasants go into the king's castle, the king's soldiers can kill them. And there are, there are people in our country that are okay with that. That's scary. 
That is scary. And you say, how do people get like that? They get like that when CNN and MSNBC, when the news channels give this prostitute, they give her airtime and they let her go on and talk about how in our collective memories, some dates stand out. December 7th, 1941. September 1st, 2001. January 6th, 2021. Yeah, they're all the same. We allow them to say that. They go out and they spew this propaganda. And you wonder why Americans will say things like, Ashley Babbitt got what she deserved. The same people that say, George Floyd was murdered. The exact same people that want to burn down a city because George Floyd was murdered. How many cities got burned down in the name of Ashley Babbitt, Jared? Go. Uh, zero. To my yeah, knowledge. Hey. Zero. We're, see, we're the scary ones, these. We're the insurrectionists. We're the, we're the, Zach, get the beat button ready. We're the sh insurrectionists in the history of the world. If, if Red Hat Trump supporters are insurrectionists, we're the worst insurrectionists ever. We don't burn down cities. We don't bomb government buildings. We don't go on sniper attacks. We're the worst. We're literally the crappiest, worst insurrectionists in the world. But I digress. You guys want to talk about the... Uh, <laughs> uh, you want to talk about the 30 super carry? I know my dedicated audience does. <laughs> Oh, uh, how much time we got, Zach? We got some time. Uh, yeah, we, we got about another 10 minutes until we should wrap up. Okay. So you guys have been asking me, you're like, what do you think about the 30 super carrier? The, uh, Julie Golub, yeah, I'd like to thank Julie Golub of Team Smith & Wesson for doing videos about that. Jared, who would you like to thank? <laughs> Julie Golub of Smith & Wesson. Of Team Smith & Wesson for... Yep. That's, see, that's one of those jokes that you got to be here for a while to get. <laughs> if you've been here for a while, you get that you're like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, if you're not, you're like, why'd you bring her up? Uh, so in for those of you that haven't been paying attention, Federal announced last week that they have a new handgun cartridge. Um, and actually, they got Jim Gilliland to pimp it, too. Um, so Jim and Julie went out and did videos to pimp this cartridge. And I talked to somebody in the industry yesterday who works for a company that makes black pistols. And they said, he said, yeah, I've known about that for a year because they federal's been shopping that around all over the country, trying to get everybody to build guns for them. And they, they only got two. They got Nighthawk custom. So you can either buy a $4,000 custom 1911 chambered in this new cartridge or you can get a smith and wesson easy carry shield which is about as popular as jock itch <laughs> the easy carry with the squeeze cocker and the thumbs is i'm just gonna go ahead and say it it's a turd it's a turd oh come on paul i have one and i love it congratulations some people love turds so that's your choice you can either buy a $4,000 custom gun or a turd that Smith & Wesson can't get off the shelves. Um, <laughs> and the gentleman I was talking to yesterday, I said, hey, what do you think about the 300 super carry? And he goes, you mean the 30 carry? And I was like, yeah. He goes, he goes, it was an interesting idea 100 years ago when they came up with it. So for those of you that don't believe that history repeats itself constantly, um, <laughs> Mauser, all right, so let's let me break it down for you. 30, it's actually it's a 32 ACP magnum, is what it is. So they took the 32 ACP and they made the case longer so it could hold more powder. 
but it's the exact same projectile as a 32 ACP. You're like, I wouldn't carry a 32 ACP if you paid me. Shh, shh. You're not listening to the propaganda. <laughs> They're like, yeah, but you don't understand. The 32 ACP is only 990 feet per second. This is 12. Yeah, but it's still a 32 caliber. It's 0.315, right? What do we know about metrics? What is a 7.62, Jared? What caliber is it? 30. 30, right? So way back in the olden days, in 1889, Mauser came out with a pistol. The 1889 Mauser pistol, and it was chambered in 7.65 by 53 Mauser. It was a 30 caliber pistol cartridge. Do you what now? Is that true? Yep, that's true. Now, those of you who are really firearms historians, you'll know that when it comes to collectible Mauser pistols, there are wooden handle Mauser pistols that have a red nine in the wooden grip. Do you know why that is, Jared? Um, no, I do not. Because they changed the 765 Mauser to a nine millimeter Luger. The pistols look the same. So in order for the average user to determine, like, was well, that the 765 or is that the 9mm, they put a red 9 in the wooden grip because they bumped it up to 9mm. What? <laughs> so over 100 years ago, we had a 30 caliber pistol and they used it for a while and they said, you know what would make this better? <laughs> Let's make it a nine. <laughs> oh, they, they used to call them the broom handles. For those of you, you guys who are old like me, um, they called them the broom handle Mausers. And uh, if you can get a broom handle Mauser with the red nine, in the grips, that is a collector's item. Well, if you can get any of the originals, they're collector's items. Uh, here's one on an auction site, classic arms for only $4,400. So there you go. There you go. There you go. You can get one all day. Uh, people say, well, well, you know, they, ex Federal explained it. You know, they explained why it's good and, and, and everything. And I'm like, okay, I get that. But here's the, remember we talked about these little wrinkles by my eyes? I got these by living and paying attention. I'm going to start naming off to you cartridges that when they were released by the manufacturer were touted as this is the faux shizzle. Pay attention. Nine millimeter tactical Smith and Wesson TSW. Nine by 21. 357 SIG. 41 AE. 45 GAP. 440 Corbon, 327 Federal, 357 Maximum. I didn't say Magnum. I said Maximum. 45 ACP Magnum or 45 Magnum. Did you know there was a 45 Magnum Auto cartridge, Jared? Yes, 45 you did? Magnum Auto. You did that? You knew that? Okay. Maybe, maybe not. You didn't know that. We haven't made that for years. Uh, and you say, but. But Paul, all those things you just ticked off, those were all in my lifetime. Those were all the new hotness. 32 NAA. Like, what the heck's a 32 NAA? That's a 380 cartridge casing neck down to 32 so you can push the 32 bullet faster. Yeah, but this isn't this isn't a bottleneck cartridge, Paul. Those are the things you talked about were bottleneck cartridges. This isn't. It's a straight wall cartridge. That's the difference. <laughs> if I wanted a 30 caliber bullet to go super fast, I there's a 762 by 25 millimeter Takarov. Ever heard of it? It pushes a 95 grain bullet out about 1300 feet per second. It's a barrel burner. Yeah, but that's a bottleneck cartridge and we don't care about that. This is a straight wall cartridge. That's the difference. <laughs> a 
ladies and germs, if I was running an ammo company, rather than come up with a brand new cartridge where I'm going to have to make new dies, new loading equipment, new cases, what I might want to focus on is trying to get nine millimeter back down to reasonable prices. Before you create yet another cartridge that you're going to have to manufacture in your facility, why don't you park that, take the time that you were going to spend on the 30 super carry and make nine mil. Uh, nine mil is no good anymore because that was designed for the military. You see, it was explained to me that the 30 super carry is a good cartridge because it wasn't designed for the military or police. I don't know how that makes it. <laughs> I really am not sure how that makes any difference. Like, yeah, but the 30 Mauser, I'm sorry, the 762, the 765 Mauser and the 762 by 25 Tock, those were 30 caliber bullets that were screaming downrange. Now, the Tock ammo, that, that's a sleeper. If you want a handgun that shoots a 30 caliber bullet crazy fast, there you go. But no, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> I, I like Fed. Don't get me wrong. I like federal. But we've seen we've I've I've played this game before. OK, and you can add to that list of all the cartridges that I said that were going to be the saviors of the world. And then pfft, the 40 Smith and Wesson. Now, it took a long time because a lot of agencies bought them. Um, but. Yeah, you're like 357 maximum. That's not a real thing. Look it up. Look it up. Nine millimeter TSW. Look it up. What? You're crazy. No, look it up. All these, all these the good idea fairies, they land and they whisper in your ear. They're like, I've got a good idea. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I've seen Zach. We, I've seen the May Mays popping up already. Yeah. Um, what does is, what is Big Gay Al say? What is he? Super, thanks for asking. I'm super. Thanks for asking. Okay. <laughs> so the, the 30 super, when, when people are talking about it online, I'm seeing these Big Gay Al May Mays dropping into the comments now. <laughs> the super, thanks for asking. <laughs> And so now when, everybody, and when somebody says, hey, man, what do you think about the, the 30 Super or the 30? And I'm like, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super. Thanks for asking. If you want to drop that in there right now, Zach, you can. It, it makes me laugh. I got tears in my eyes. Um, folks, this all centers around the desire to make a handgun a, a rifle. Okay, if we just do the science enough, then if we if we if we just focus on the science enough, we can come up with the perfect handgun cartridge that will stop bad guys. It's it's always going to be a handgun. All right. Forty five ACP nine forty ten. Even the ten is still a handgun. If you take any of those and and compare them to even the five five six whatever which I, all the fuds are like that's not you it's a, a squirrel gun like, five five six is not a squirrel gun but okay whatever what do we need to focus on training practice 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 training training practice 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 that's what you need to be focusing on Quit trying to come up with a cartridge that is the end-all, be-all, one-shot, burst into flames, okay? If you're not planning on shooting your defensive handgun a thousand times in training and practice, you're kidding yourself. You're like, what are you talking about? Who cares? What is this freaking... All right, when you introduce a new cartridge, like the 30 Super, thanks for asking... We need to, that's going to be like the, the, to be fair. Somebody says, to be fair. When someone says fair, 30 super, you need to, you need to respond immediately with thanks for asking. Uh, how much is this crap going to cost? 
Who cares, man? It's, it's a defensive ammo. You don't practice with it. That's my next. That's my new favorite. Is well, it's defensive ammo. You don't practice with it. Excuse me. What? Excuse. Me. Hang on. Hang on. I had some. I had some stupid in my ear. I had to get it out. What? So, how much is practice ammo going to cost for this thing? Fifty cents a shot. Seventy-five cents a shot. You tell me. Uh, if you want to buy one, if you have to be the guy that has the new thing, go crazy. Have at it. You'll sell it in a year. Or you'll put it in your safe and forget about it. Uh, it it's, it's like when they said, you know, when people say derp a derp is going to replace the fill in the blank, you're like, really? No, is it? Ten years ago, the 6.8 SPC was going to replace the 556 and it was supposed to replace it within five years in 2000 in 2009 i was told within five years all military rifles are going to be cherry mirrored in in six eight not a scientist but 2009 to now it's been more than five years and last i checked the m4s are still 556 do you know what it takes? That would be that's like saying we're going to change all um, combustion engines over to sunshine power or rainbow fart power or whatever, and it's going to happen in five years. Kids, like I said, everyone was everyone that when the three fifty seven Sig came out, it was on the cover of every gun magazine in America. Everyone. Everybody rushed to produce it. Some people rushed to buy it. Ten years later, it's a niche cartridge. That's more than it's been more than ten years, but it is now. Go to your your local firearm surplus company. You can pick up three fifty seven SIGs for pennies on the dollar because nobody wants them. What is the future for three hundred super carry? I don't know, but I would be shocked if it became. It's not going to replace anything. What's it, you're like? It's going to replace the nine. Why? Because, because reasons, man. And you know what's funny is someone said, "Oh well, yeah, but Remington's going to make it." Vista Outdoors owns Remington Ammo now. Oh, so it's all the same company. Yes. <laughs> well, Spears going to make it and Blazer's going to make it. Vista Outdoors owns all those companies. They make the ammo in the same factory. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> uh, if you guys have shot one, um, let me know what you think about it. I haven't had a chance to shoot one. I've heard that the... Uh, oh, Cover of Guns and Ammo. It is currently the cover of Guns and Ammo. There you go. I've heard that it is really snappy. That it's a a, a, a wrist snapper. Uh, like I said, if you want to buy one, go for it. Go for it, man. I, I used to think the 41 AE was a cool cartridge. I still think it is kind of a cool cartridge. Um, but it's it's a museum piece now. When it came out, people were like, man, this is cool. Check this out. And you're like, and, and some of you kids out there are like, what is this guy talking about? He's putting these numbers and letters together, and I don't understand what those are. Uh, look it up. 41 AE. 9 millimeter TSW. 9 by 21. You know, 357 SIG. 45 gap. I've got some 45 gap. If you guys want it, the 45 gap was a freaking snappy. Oh, my sweet heavenly Lord. Uh, I shot 45 gap out of a Glock 23 size gun. Jeez Louise, the freaking felt recoil on that thing was retarded. Um, and, you know, bless their hearts. It's kind of like one of those people said, is, is it a. 
Is that a, a an answer searching for a question? Could be. Could be. So it's there you go. That sometimes. is that is my take on the 30 Super. You dropped the ball, man. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. Zach, you couldn't come up with that. The hell, but how are you? I'm super. Thanks for asking. All things considered, I couldn't be better, I must say. I'm feeling super. No, nothing bugs me. Everything is super when you're, don't you think I look cute in this hat? <laughs> Oh, man. So there you go, kids. <laughs> you're welcome. And so when you're, when you're with your peers in the future and one of your peers says, hey, man, did you hear about the new 30 Super? There you go. <laughs> and you can say, thanks for asking. <laughs> and then you can say, don't you think I look cute in this hat? <laughs> you should be like what what <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you speak of oh man oh man oh man oh man all right so tomorrow thursday uh thursday episode bonus hour number two it's, uh, it's gonna be well it's the first bonus hour but it's uh one one two zero covid sniffing dogs welcome to the fourth reich yep Yep. Yes, indeed. We're going to have a fighting fitness for you guys. We're going to have a basically business and leadership from Hal Moore. All that goodness is going to be on tomorrow's show. So if you'd like to join us, we'd love for you to be there. How can they do that, Jared? How can they be with us tomorrow? You, It's super easy. You go to getsotg.com, join us. It costs you a dollar for a 30-day trial. And if uh, if you don't like it, then you can leave. If you do like it, then you have to stay. That's right. If you ha if you like it, you have to stay. I might Just force you to stay yeah. anyway. Yeah, because I know what's best for you. <laughs> there you go. All right. Until the next time we're together, kids, and and I expect to see Maymays in the Discord channel mm -hmm. discussing the super. Thanks for asking. The thirty super on Maymay. Yeah, uh, but if, just remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.